13 year old Dustin Edens had to work on his game by himself for a few days after a recent run in with a teammate during practice. He drove right around the pick and came at me and hit me with his shoulder first right into my chest and my head bounced off the ground. All right, and follow. It was Dustin's third concussion in two months, although it might surprise you to know that it's often hard for doctors to tell where one concussion ends and another begins. We don't have tests that tell us when someone is recovered from their concussion. Instead, doctors have to rely mostly on patients to tell them when they feel better. Things like headaches, fatigue, and irritability can all be signs that the concussion is lingering, and in some kids, they can linger a long time. There is this group of kids that are at risk um, and do seem to be able to continue to have these symptoms even up to a year. Uh, after their injury. To better understand which kids may be at risk, Dr. Keith Yates of Nationwide Children's Hospital followed nearly 200 children with concussions for a year. His study published in Pediatrics found that while most kids had few problems, one out of every four experienced significant post-concussive symptoms, some of which never fully resolved. And those whose concussions resulted in a loss of consciousness, amnesia, or an abnormal CT scan were more likely to have symptoms that persist. We do know that there are kids that are at risk and we can begin to identify them uh, and monitor them over time and provide appropriate intervention and assistance if they have these these symptoms. Dr. Yates believes classifying concussions as high risk or low risk may help physicians determine which patients need special attention, which could give them a better shot at a faster recovery. At Nationwide Children's Hospital, this is Clark Powell reporting.